You know, we have a couple options when it comes to corticosteroids and asthma and COPD exacerbations. The most common ones would be dexamethasone and methylprednisone. Now, what we need to ask ourselves, especially when we're talking about GEMS articles, they're talking about what's the best option here for it. If we had that, should we use dexamethasone or should we be sticking to the more dominant methylprednisone? Let's check them out and see which one comes out on top. So GEMS released an article talking about the appropriate selection of corticosteroids in treating asthma and COPD. And so the big ones that we're talking about here are often dexamethasone and methylprednisone. Those are the two most common corticosteroids that we see in the EMS setting. And so one thing that we wanna mention is that we're talking about severe exacerbations of asthma and COPD. So that's the first thing that I wanted to mention is those patients that are having difficult breathing even after giving them the bronchodilator maybe even CPAP and they're still having some trouble so we know that they're at least in kind of the moderate to going to severe exacerbations that we need to treat okay so those are the ones that we're talking about when it comes to corticosteroids and so when it comes to between methylprednisone and dexamethasone and which one is better than the other there's actually no study that's been done that's truly showing that one is better than the other what we can say for certain though when it comes to the studies is that patients that are given a corticosteroid steroid as opposed to ones that have not actually fare much better and have shorter times in the hospital. So that we know for certain is that our patient patients in severe exacerbation should be getting a corticosteroid as opposed to not. That is for certain. So how do corticosteroids actually work? Well, against popular belief, corticosteroids actually work quite fast, okay? They are fast acting. Okay. And these fast acting, uh, basic, what the fast acting mechanism is happening here is actually is going to relieve all of this congestion here. So we know that we have an immune response in asthma and COPD that's going to occur. That's going to increase mucus production. It's going to cause bronchoconstriction. All this kind of thing is going to happen when we have a severe exacerbation. Now what's going to happen with this fast acting and those corticosteroids in the fast acting sense is that it's actually going to reduce some of this mucus production because that's part of the immune response and it's also going to reduce some of this inflammation which again is part of that immune response. So again like I said contrary to popular belief corticosteroids do work in fast acting mechanisms to relieve some of the inflammation that's going on here. There is also a mechanism that happens in the four to six hour range and that is is actually going to stop from any other inflammation processes from occurring by basically blocking the immune mediators and immune system mediators and inflammatory mediators to keep them this from happening four to six hours later and beyond so that's the kind of the key piece here to understand is that corticosteroids are not just for later they're for you right now in severe exacerbations of COPD and asthma so again another tick in the box saying we should be giving them in EMS as opposed to not because they definitely benefit us and this patient in the short term in order to relieve some of that inflammation that's going on in those bronchioles. Okay, so we know that we need to give this particular medication, this corticosteroid, in a severe exacerbation. It benefits the patient, and it benefits exactly what's happening at that moment, not just four to six hours later. So that's good news. Now we need to decide, and let's say we have dexamethasone and methylprednisone within our repertoire. Okay, we can have both of them. So you're going, okay, which one should I choose? Should I choose dex or should I use methylprednisone? Well, for the most part, you could choose either one of them and you would be absolutely correct in on those particular situations. But there is a certain history in a patient that we need to look for that might tell us that we might give one over the other. When it comes to methylprednisone, it actually is going to bind to a particular uh, to a particular receptor and this particular receptor is called the mineral corticoid receptor and this mineral corticoid receptor the reason that it's a problem is because it actually affects the kidneys it's actually going to allow us to retain sodium and deplete potassium 
Okay, so that's the big thing that we need to be watching out for in these particular patients is that this one actually, but methylprednisone will bind to that mineral corticoid receptor and stimulate the body to hold on to their sodium and get rid of their potassium. So when it comes to that particular thing, what we need to be looking out for is volume overload in particularly because anytime we hold on to sodium, our body wants to hold on to water. So that's one thing that we need to look out for in those particular patients is those patients that can't handle water overload because of that sodium retention and then also those patients that have a hypertension problem and if they have hypertension that's another thing is that if they're very sodium uh, dependent or they're sodium sensitive which a lot of hypertensive patients are that could be a problem as well so if you have a patient that has uh, congestive heart failure for example any of a patient that maybe is quite hypertensive and on a kind of in a chronic sense then they might be more sensitive to these changes of their electrolytes like sodium and potassium so if you have a patient that has that history dexamethasone might actually be your better bet because it doesn't bind to that same receptor leaving the kidneys alone and allowing for just the actual effect that we want other than that for example if you have an asthmatic that has no prior history other than the fact that they're an asthmatic neither of these both of these medications are gonna do exactly what you need them to do however if you do have a patient that has that pre-existing history then that might lead you towards using dexamethasone over the methylprednisone to avoid that particular uh, side effect of those drugs another one thing that actually leads us into the dexamethasone side and it being kind of the uh, the winner in this kind of case is that it two particular things is that at its regular dose at its main starting dose typically dexamethasone has six times the inflammatory process the inflammatory activity that the methylprednisone has and so the initial dosing of dexamethasone is a little more potent and allows for a little bit quicker uh, reduction of inflammation it's actually six times more reduction at its starting dose. Methylprednisone at higher doses starts to catch up to that, but just kind of looking at one dose and the other of typical dosings, dexamethasone wins out with a more potency and the effects relieve some of that inflammation. It also has a longer duration which is an important piece, especially when we know that these inflammatory processes are not gonna go away short term. This is something that's going to continue to evolve over the next few hours. And so something like dexamethasone having a longer duration might point us better in that direction as well over methylprednisone. So the management of COP or severe exacerbations of COP and asthma, we know that we're going to be giving some O2, some bronchodilators, some CPAP, and of course our IV corticosteroids. Now when, when it comes to looking at deeper into the methylprednisone and the dexamethasone a little war here, we see the dexamethasone kind of leans out on methylprednisone a little bit and ends up doing it just simply because it has more potency on its first dosing, it has a longer duration, and it doesn't affect that mineral, mineral corticoid um, receptor and kind of relieving some of those and retaining some of that sodium and getting rid of that potassium in those particular subset of patients that would be risky in that situation. So dexamethasone does weigh out on the methylprednisone and for those particular reasons but again what we know for certain is that when it comes to a severe exacerbation patients do better when they're given a corticosteroid when they're not. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Hopefully you learned something about methylprednisone and a dexamethasone and which one is better than the other in those kind of situations and why we give it. So if you are interested in these videos, don't forget to check out the original article here and check out a deeper understanding of this. This is just an overview. Go and check out that, that article, read it and really understand why dexamethasone is weighing out methylprednisone in these particular situations with severe exacerbations of asthma and COPD. If you're interested as well, if you love these videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well so we can get these videos out to you and you can learn more and continue to elevate your practice. We'll see you next time.